I'm Darren Milne, the CEO and co-founder of VividQ, and today we're going to talk about how computer-generated holography can solve some of the biggest problems for AR displays today. So VividQ is a Cambridge-based company out of the UK that actually grew out of a research initiative at the University of Cambridge. So myself and a group of technical co-founders uncovered some new advances in holographic display that enabled us to kickstart a company specifically to create products based on computer generated holography that can revolutionize this entire space. So let's get into it. What are some of these issues affecting the uptake of AR? Well, there are many. Uh, so there are more social issues, so such as uh, the perception of AR within the world. Do people really know what it is? Would they know what to do with it even if they had it? I don't think these things have been solved yet. Uh, there is still a huge amount of uncertainty over why people would want augmented reality as a daily tool. Of course, everybody got very excited about Pokemon Go as a mobile AR app, but beyond those perception issues, there's also the technical issues. Do the current crop of devices deliver on what the consumer market needs in order to uh, fulfill their expectations. And here, I would say no. We can break down the technological issues in the current uh, devices into these six categories. So first up, and this is absolutely mandatory for a consumer device, it has to be comfortable to wear. Now, there are several factors that influence comfort, including the weight of the device, uh, how it fits on your face, uh, you know, whether it does it get hot uh, after a prolonged use. Uh, but one of the more critical ones is, do the images you're presented give you a convincing and comfortable experience? Or do they cause things like eye fatigue or nausea or headaches? Uh, in a great many of the displays today, because they rely on a stereoscopic style display, uh, they can produce in a certain number of users these unfortunate effects, making them somewhat unsuitable for mass adoption. When 20% of your user base start to feel ill after using a stereo display, well, that's, that's an awful lot of people who are not going to be very happy to use your device. Even for those that are comfortable with current stereo display, there remains the problem of field of view. One wants a large field of view, so you can see large objects up close. Uh, but many of the devices today are highly restricted. And there is this intrinsic trade-off between field of view and one of the other factors here, this, the form factor, so the ultimate size of the device. It tends to be for larger field of views, you need larger form factors, i.e. bulkier devices. Bulkier devices are less stylish, less desirable to wear, and tend to be heavier. And this fundamental trade-off is kind of key. If you want to have a nice, neat pair of glasses, uh, you will have to currently accept a rather small field of view, and that does not deliver on the visual experience that people expect. Another contentious issue is power use versus brightness and image quality. We want high image quality, we want high resolution, but that requires high resolution displays, which are power hungry. You want the display to be visible in all lighting conditions, i.e. outside and bright sunlight as well as indoors, but again, that's power hungry. So if you want all these features, you need a big battery delivering a lot of power. Big batteries are heavy, they get hot, and they contribute to making the form factor, the design of the glasses, uh, much larger, which is less desirable. So what do people want? They want all day view comfort, a big field of view, they want very high image quality and they want to use it everywhere and be able to see the images wherever they are. And they want that in a package the size of a set of sunglasses, all weighing less than 100 grams. That is a tough, tough challenge. And that isn't even the biggest one. The biggest challenge is actually, how do you present images to the user that will look like they actually are embedded within the world and are interactive? So two of the best use cases for AR, as we see it, is your ability to embed your digital content within the world around you, whether that's uh, tagging restaurants as you walk down the street, giving TripAdvisor reviews in context with, with the building, uh, or being able to see game characters running around the room with you. You want to be able to place the digital content where you want and for it to look like it's genuinely at that position. 
In addition, you want to be able to interact directly with this content. So I want to have a, I want to be able to have content within arm's reach, so I can directly and intuitively uh, interact with it, uh, rather than it being held at some far off distance. But neither of these things are really possible in current AR display because fundamentally AR display today is two dimensional. It's two dimensional overlay on a 3D world. And this is what you see today in the left hand panel here. We see the apple in the foreground and a bowl of apples in the background. Uh, but a current day AR display will present these at the same apparent depth, relying on psychological cues to inform you that these things are actually spatially separated. But what you want is what we have on the right here. As my eyes focus on different depths, I see the virtual objects focus and defocus naturally. This is the only way to get that genuine embedding within the environment, the only way to make sure the virtual content looks like it's really there in the room with you. And this is also the only way you can ensure that you have full interaction. If I have objects that don't appear to defocus correctly and I have something within arm's reach uh, and something that is far away, but they both appear at the same focus, my ability to interact will be severely hampered in that I won't be able to locate them in space and I therefore won't have an intuitive way to deal with them. So how do we get around these? Well, we need a real 3D display technology, something that doesn't just give me a two-dimensional overlay using a stereoscopic type system. I need something that displays genuine 3D images. And how do you do that? Well, this is where computer-generated holography comes in, and this is what VividQ develop. So computer-generated holography is a totally different way of doing display. Rather than displaying a real image, uh, through a waveguide or birdbath optics or any of the other types that are currently available. Instead, we display a hologram. Now, a hologram is not an image. It's an instruction set for light. So we present on our display, and this can be something like uh, an LCOS or a DMD style display, we present this pattern we call the hologram and we reflect light off it. That light can be uh, coherent light, like laser light or even LED. The hologram instructs the light incident on it how to behave, and it creates an interference pattern that forms a three-dimensional object in the space in front of the display. So the image created is genuinely 3D and contains all the depth cues you'd expect of a real 3D object. Your eye perceives it in the same way that it perceives real objects, because in effect, we are recreating the entire wavefront that would be created by a real object. So there are no tricks here. There's no stereoscopic display that's trying to convince you it's a 3D image. It's a genuine 3D image. Now, this principle has been known for quite some time, but it has never really emerged from the academic labs because while it is relatively simple to construct the optical systems to support computer-generated holography, the barrier has always been in the computational side. To compute this hologram, this instruction set, has always required several minutes or if not hours of compute time on large GPU clusters. And this clearly is a barrier to adoption. No one wants to carry around an entire stack of GPUs to power a headset. VividQ's big innovation was coming up with a set of algorithms that allows us to compute these holograms in a few milliseconds on something no more powerful than a smartphone. With that advance, we can now bring this technology to the consumer market and use it to its full advantage. So, this isn't just theory. Here is an example of a holographic image we created in our lab in Cambridge. And you can see we have two dinosaurs, one in the near focus, one in the far focus. These are created simultaneously. There is no camera in the loop style trick here. And as we refocus the camera, you see the different dinosaurs snap into focus showing this is a genuine 3D image. So holographic display then is the way to do genuine 3D. And this has applications obviously for AR as it immediately improves the experience, giving you that immersiveness and interaction that you always wanted from your AR system. But it has applications beyond that, including in the automotive world for head up display where you want to show more accurate safety and navigation. Uh, through the windshield of the car, and even onto larger scale displays like smartphones, tablets, uh, and laptop screens, where you want to see things like games jump out of the screen at you without you ever having to wear any kind of glasses at all. 
So VivaQ is the supplier of the software and the IP in order to make this happen. So on the software side, VivaQ offers software development kits that contain our highly specialist algorithms that allow us to do this extremely fast computation on low power compute. In addition, we supply an API that allows you to do full integration with whatever product you're designing. So for example, our AR wearable development kit allows you to design and build holographic based uh, augmented reality wearables like smart glasses or headsets uh, using our algorithms embedded along with our display pipeline. As an optical engineer, all you have to do is hook this up to your content source like Unity or Unreal or some other 3D engine, hook the other end up to the display system you're using and VividQ software handles everything in between. We'll do the data pipelining, the heavy compute and the synchronization with the display. Similarly, we offer an automotive development kit uh, for the development principally of augmented reality HUDs, but also in-car infotainment systems. Uh, and upcoming will be our holographic LCD package. This allows you to take off-the-shelf LCD panels, as those found in tablets or smartphones, and convert them to full holographic displays. To support our software package, we also have a sizable IP portfolio on hardware designs. This includes reference designs on optical engines, uh, secondary optics for AR, uh, as well as full designs for headsets, head-up displays, and our holographic LCD concept. These can be made available alongside the software to support any project where you want to develop uh, a full-scale system. As VividQ are the software and IP side of this, we work with a variety of partners to be able to deliver full systems to our customers. These partnerships cover a variety of areas, from optical systems, uh, compute platforms, tracking systems, micro display, as well as content. We work directly with many of these partners to optimize our software and for them to optimize their hardware to provide the best possible computer generated holographic display systems. So to summarize, consumer AR is still a very tough challenge. The current display systems available are unlikely to meet the demands not just in terms of things like field of view and power use, but more intrinsically. None of the current displays available in the market give genuine 3D imagery. And this is totally necessary for some of the more interesting applications of AR that consumers will want to access, that full immersive experience as well as the interaction. Without those, there will be no consumer market. Computer generated holography is one of the few technologies that can deliver on that and therefore it is on the critical path to mass consumer adoption of this technology. So if you want to know more, last year we did release a white paper detailing how our technology works, its likely applications, and what we perceive to be the major next steps the industry needs to take in order to get consumer adoption for AR. Uh, this work was kindly supported by Microsoft, NVIDIA, HTC, Cortronic, and iView. And you can download the white paper from our website via the link there, or you can email us directly to get a copy. Thank you for your attention. I'd just like to remind you, the world isn't flat, but our displays still are, and we're on a mission to change that. If you share that vision, please come and talk to us. Thank you.